So tell me what it feels like for you to have that kind of success where you go to South by Southwest and they can't even get in the door. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it, it feels incredible. You know, I've been uh, making films for the last 10 to 15 years, yes. uh, doing a lot of short form content, web series, just creating any way that I can. Um, you know, but to step into making a feature film and to be able to have so many people rally around me to support it being mm. made and give their money, give their time, give their own artistry and just see it soar is, it's just a tremendous feeling. I think that we're all kind of <laughs> in shock a little bit. <laughs> I love that still, little laugh. You know, it's, that, it's a, it's a laugh know, of disbelief and joy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you do believe it, but it's also just a stunning feeling. Mm. It is, isn't, isn't it the best feeling in the world when God, light, creator, whatever you believe in, fulfills your dream? Yeah. Yes. You know, and you and you get the star in this movie. You get you get you get to play in it. Tell me, so tell me what it felt like to work on this project and to and because this project is not typical in the sense that it does not present or or, or proffer before the world a stereotypical image of black women. It right. dares to cut a different way. What was that like for you? A dream come true. I mean, first of all, I was in love, obsessed with Numa, even though I didn't meet her <laughs> before I got the role. Um, but it was just something that I, I, I could be proud of. It, it was a story that, this is my feature film debut, so to come on the scene. Are you serious? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. They should be clapping, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> She is outstanding. <laughs> it's like introducing a star. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and to <laughs> arrive on the scene with something so profound and mm. real, it just means so much to me because we're giving people, women of all kinds, hopes, but especially mm. black women yeah. and little mm. girls to show them they can be empowered by their power that they hold deep inside of them. I'm proud to be a part of this movement. I know, that's right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to hit you with these cards, girl. Don't play with me. <laughs> but, but, you know, Netflix. Mm -hmm. is, is coming on Netflix, is that right? Yes, so uh, we went to South by Southwest. We had all these great screenings. And Ava DuVernay's company, Array, uh, picked up the film. Yeah, shout out to Ava. Yeah, and Ava there could right. not be a better home for our film. This film is about black women. It's made by black women. And Tell now this story, great team of black women are distributing it. Yeah. And the, the film is a true story. It's my true story about when I was 19 years old. I was living, I was crashing really with my older sister, her boyfriend, her son, and my brother, so five of us family members in a mm. little studio apartment with barely even a door, <laughs> barely even a mm. door. Uh, we were all crashing in this studio apartment together and our mom at the time was in the last days of her life um, for diabetic complications. Mm. So every day we were just like figuring out how to go um, visit her at the hospital and just kind of this thing looming over us, like what are mm. we going to do when she passes? And my sister was working as a phone sex operator. So mm. because we live in these close quarters, mm. when she would you know, get on the phone for her shift, we would either have to leave or just like put our headphones on. This is like <laughs> 1999, <laughs> you know, and just try to block it out or just hear it while you're also watching TV. And so that was, you know, a really um, kind of my entry point into just hearing anything that had to do with sexuality at mm. all. And uh, when our mother did pass away, my sister was like, girl, you got to get your act together. Um, there's this job called internet modeling, and it's the early days of the internet. Mm. So people didn't have internet in their apartment readily. I if you didn't. did, it I was like, yeah, exactly. No. So I didn't really know what that was, but basically it was the early days of being a cam girl, mm. which is being online and engaging in intimate fantasies with someone you can't even see on the other side of that computer. Mm. So <laughs> I went into this office. I got hired for the job on the spot. I was the only a uh, young black woman working there, the only mm. black person there at all. And the film is about how that really shaped my relationship with my sister. It's really a love story between us. Mm. And how I also, you know, came into my womanhood 
through this job, you know, mm. through kind of um, molding myself through this job mm -hmm. and the relationships that, that I made there. So, uh, you know, as I said, I've been making films for a long time, but I really wanted this to be my first feature length film yeah. to really delve into the story. And Tiffany uh, is playing me at 19, <laughs> wow. and I'm playing my older sister in the film. Wow. So, uh, wow. so that is. Basically, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> it, it, a couple of things you said there that fascinate me. One of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show, uh, and I was excited that you were coming, is that there are a lot of people watching who heard what you just said, mm -hmm. and they so holy and self-righteous and judgmental that the moment you mentioned phone sex mm -hmm. and what you call video girl. Cam girl. Cam girl, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cam girl. <laughs> They, they went and got their holy oil <laughs> and their Bible. No, they didn't. <laughs> they leaked that's my point. That, they said that's that. That's my point. That's my point. Is that, is that one of the, we are not just Sunday morning people. Mm -hmm. We're Saturday night people, too. Mm -hmm. We have that part of who we are. And, and what your movie, what your story forces us to realize is the rich complexity that black women have not historically been afforded to express. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're doing that. Yeah. Well, we are expressing it. You know, we're expressing it in private ways. And yes. we're expressing it, you know, on our own terms, really. And, uh, yeah, that's, I really think that when people hear that, it's really interesting. A lot of the screenings that we've had, uh, seeing older black women in the audience who do even more so come from a, gener a generation that doesn't have, you know, a lot of language for what sex positivity is in a broader sense, mm. but seeing them sit and watch the film and giggle and just be so enthralled and come and talk to us after about their own lives has just been right. remarkable for us. Look, Maya Angelou, before she passed away, revealed to the world that she had been a sex worker. Yes, it's in her book, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. That's right, and, oh, and, and, so, and so people have, you know, people have histories. Yeah. Um, I, wa I, wanna, I wanna ask you about sex positivity in a second, but we have a clip, and I want the audience to be able to see uh, this film. So okay. let's let's run the clip. Most of the girls don't even last a month here. You got her doing the nasty stuff now too. <laughs> they don't stick these on people's doors who pay the rent. Well, maybe if you work some time, it will be paid. <laughs> wow. <What? laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> See the rest on Netflix. See the rest on January Netflix. 16th. Yeah. <laughs> now, what, what day does it come out? January 16th. So it's so, coming out soon. Mm -hmm. uh, that Next that has to be a tremendous feeling. How does it feel to see yourself, you know, at the at the film festival? Now you're gonna be able to go home and and, and take out your phone or your, right. or your or your tablet and see yourself. Well, it's an honor to see myself. I always wanted to see myself in a future film, and it's here thanks to Numa. <laughs> so thank you, sis. Um, but I'm more I'm more excited to see how it's going to impact audiences and for other girls to see women of my complexion, women, uh, the sensitivity that my character have, the tenderness, and when she comes into her power. I'm excited for people, young girls, to be able to see that and hopefully see themselves in it and also be empowered. Yeah. But it is really, like I said, it's a dream come true and <laughs> it keeps getting better and better. You still look excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still look excited. Yeah. So listen, we have a question from the audience and I'm, I'm oh, just, yes. just uh, introduce yourself and then tell us what you want us to hear. Hi, my name is Marcus. Hi. Um, and I, first of all, wanted to commend you on the outstanding job on the, uh, the film. Um, but my question was, um, you know, coming from the black community um, and being that this is your story, but it's, you know, a little on the taboo side, uh, where did the encouragement come from to put this out there and then you acting in it? Uh, what were your thoughts on, you know, my family's gonna see this, you know, my grandparents, you know, what was that like? Well, I was adopted. I love my mommy. And um, she's 89 years old, my mom, who raised me, right? Yeah. And that was the, one of the scariest things, to be able to tell her and my family, of course, religious family, that I'm in a movie called Jezebel. I mean, we all know that name is radical in itself. Women over time, black women over time, has been stigmatized and like put down with that name. So to, to be able to like 
be emboldened by that and know that it's a true story based on my director. Because once I found out it was her life story, her experience, it was a no-brainer for me. I had to just honor her and especially honor the other women around the country, sex workers, who also have the same journey. Yeah. Numa, you, you want to say anything to that? Yeah, uh, the support came a lot from other women. Uh, when I f was first writing the script, I had changed the names. Mm -hmm. And when I would talk, when I was workshopping the script early on, I would talk about the script as if it weren't me. And uh, it became really, really difficult to continue doing that when people are giving you notes. And I'm like, well, she, you're like stumbling over your words, you know. <laughs> and finally, I just said, you know, this is my story like, to mm -hmm. a group uh, of mentors mm -hmm. I was working with. And the air went out of the room. And they said, you have to say that. Yeah. You have to say, because you know, I'm thinking, I'm just being bold enough, you know, yeah. by telling the right. story at right. all. But once I said that, it took on a whole other level of, I have every right to tell this story, you know, okay. and that, um, just that courage that had that had to come out. But a lot of the support came from other women yeah. that said, oh no, this is, this is a must. This takes mm -hmm. it into another place where it can impinge in a deeper way. Yeah. You know, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I want to just, just we, we have a poll question that I'm asking the, the audience is viewing to, to go on to our app and go online to answer. Here's the question. Are black women's beauty celebrated in the media? Mm. Uh -oh. All right? Whew. Go on and vote now at <laughs> foxhole.tv uh, slash vote and tell us what you think. Are, are black women and their beauty, is it celebrated in the media? I think I know what the answer is going to be. Yeah. But, but I want to hear from you. Now, you, you said something in response to the young man's question uh, that deeply fascinates me. Because I think that the power of the story is not just the content of the story or the film. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is the fact that it is connected to your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where the moral authority comes mm -hmm. from. Um, so your ability to connect your life with it and to be open about that is liberating on many levels. Mm -hmm. Not the least of which, this, this is what made his question so interesting to me. I think, and I could, I'm not a black woman, obviously, <laughs> but I think there are a whole plethora of black women who can relate to the story on some level. Yes. We mm -hmm. think it's taboo, mm -hmm. but the reality is it's probably not. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I wouldn't even necessarily, I wouldn't even call it a, a taboo story. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a story about women, uh, sisters who are black, <laughs> who have to deal with grieving their mother, mm -hmm. have to become each other's mothers mm -hmm. in different way, the way that sisters are anyhow, even if your mother is alive, a sister is a mother and a friend. You'll tell your sister yeah. things that you would never even tell your mother. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think women really connect to that in a very strong way, just the way that we care for each other uh, mm. when we have to, and just as an everyday thing, that that's how families are bonded. And so I don't look at the story in that way. The work that is done in the story, the sex work, is just that work. Mm. You know, when you watch the story, you'll see that it's just like any other industry. You're fighting for your dignity. Mm. You're fighting for fair wages. Mm -hmm. You're fighting for your equality. You're doing the same things that you're doing across any other industry. Mm. You know, what's interesting mm -hmm. about that is that we have made this conversation vulgar, but what you have done tonight is you have situated this conversation right in the middle of everybody's day-to-day -day employment and uh, professional experience. Yeah. At the end of the day, which exactly what you just said, no matter what job you have mm -hmm. as a black woman, you tell me if I'm wrong, you still have to fight for those things. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No matter what job yeah. you have. Mm -hmm. And so we use, uh, religion has done this often, mm -hmm. but we use sexuality and we use what's called taboo and what's vulgar to separate experience mm -hmm. so that I look at you as something other. When the reality mm -hmm. is, as, 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 the, as the Roman poet says, I am human, therefore nothing human can be foreign to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking forward to black women seeing this movie so that they can see themselves mm -hmm. in the joys and sorrows of the movie. Yeah. Now, now, you said something that just fascinated me. Black women, sisters, mothering each other. Mm -hmm. Say more about that. <laughs> I think it applies across, you know, yeah. all sisters, really. Um, 
but yes, with in, in my family, that's very much how it was, you know. Uh, we, I was also adopted. <laughs> Tiffany and I have a lot of this um, <laughs> similar personal biography. Yeah. Um, and my older sister, uh, I wouldn't have called her like a mother while we were growing up, but now that we're both adults, I very much see how that mm -hmm. dynamic was engaged. And I don't think that it started when our mother passed away. I think mm -hmm. it just, it started <laughs> just inside of the family yeah. unit. And what's interesting, both of you have different experiences with mothers, right? Mm -hmm. You losing a mother and you not having yours, because mm -hmm. you said you were adopted, which yeah. is something we have in common, by the way. And we're um, both from Chicago, too. You are from Chicago! <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Just putting that out what, there. What, what, what part of Chicago are uh -oh. you in? <laughs> Okay, so here we go. I'm from a suburb called Oak Park. I know Oak Park. Okay, West, cool. West. But I get judged because when I say I'm from Chicago, they're like, what, you know, what's that? So thank you no for that. Judgment. <laughs> okay. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. How long, how long? So I'm totally on Sunday. Yeah, now. we're all adopted. Oh, we're all adopted. Are you adopted as well? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, that's, we're all adopted. We're, Are you serious? Yeah. So all, all of us, that's amazing. <laughs> really? Yeah. No wonder we're so brilliant. <laughs> 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 <laughs>